I love old computers, and there's something oddly satisfying about taking obsolete tech and making it functional again. Like our good old laptop here from 2008 running just a dual core CPU and just three gigs of RAM. It's probably not something that you would call fast. It's currently running Windows Vista of all things, and while it's responsive, I think we're gonna need something a bit more modern to make it usable. In our previous video, we ran Linux on this PC, and a lot of you commented about Tiny11, a de-bloated version of Windows 11. I always wanted to try Tiny11, but never have, and in fact, I did run Windows on just stock Windows on this PC, and it didn't run great at all. So let's give Tiny11 a try and see how it compares to Linux, and stock Windows 11. Now, I know some of you might be wondering, why even bother with Windows? Linux is the best for old PCs. In fact, like I mentioned in the intro, a Linux distro called Lubuntu worked surprisingly well on this machine. Definitely go watch that video after you're done with this one. But after making numerous content about Linux, I receive comments daily about how Linux isn't for everyone which is totally true. Especially if you've already been using Windows for a long time, switching to a new OS might be a little intimidating. Plus, not all programs and games work with Linux, but obviously Windows, especially in recent years, has become quite bloated. Here's a start menu of stock Windows 11, and I suspect companies like Netflix, Spotify, TikTok, and others have some sort of deal with Microsoft to include their apps by default. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with that, but as a person who doesn't really watch Netflix or use TikTok, I wish there was some sort of an options menu where I could select which apps I want or don't want, kind of like how you can do on Ninite. And it goes without saying that I kind of miss the days of Windows 7 where you would only get the absolute necessities needed for using your PC. So let's shift our focus to Tiny11 now. Tiny11 is like a stripped down version of Windows 11. It achieves this by removing a ton of pre-installed software that I mentioned earlier. The creator, NTDev, released a new version of Tiny11 just recently on his archive.org page. So follow along with me and let's try to get this HP laptop to run Windows 11. And hopefully it runs much smoother than stock version, of course. By the way, before we started shooting this video, I couldn't figure out why I wasn't able to connect to Wi-Fi on this machine. And it turns out that the CMOS battery has probably died long time ago. And because of that, the date in Windows was set to 1980. Thus Firefox wouldn't load any pages. So there's a little pro tip for you if you're already using a super old PC like me. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's head to archive.org and download the .iso file for Tiny11. The file comes in at 4.2 gigs, and compared to the official ISO, that's around a gig or so slimmer, which is already a decent difference there. After downloading, we can use Rufus to create a bootable USB and begin the installation. By the way, check out this funny thumb drive that I got. It's seriously so tiny. It fits this video so well. Once Rufus has finished, we can boot into BIOS and change the boot order to install. Okay, now that I'm in the installation screen here, you might be wondering, how are you installing Windows on this PC, or specifically Windows 11? Don't you need to have TPM 2.0 for that? Well, Tiny11 is awesome because it completely bypasses the TPM 2.0 requirements, so you can install it even if you don't have one. All right, so after what felt like an eternity, no, seriously, I was staring at this loading screen for a good 15 minutes, which is, yeah, there was a point where I thought this is not gonna install because this is crazy. But thankfully, the setup screen did come back and everything did install just fine. So long setup time aside, everything went well, and I should still point out that this laptop is running a hard drive and not an SSD, so that's probably why it took so long. Now guys, for the real experience, we're gonna have to bring in our second camera here, so excuse it here in the background. Here it is, we're gonna put it live so you can see what's going on on the screen. All right, so we set up the camera so you guys can see the screen now, and here we are. This is Tiny11 running on a laptop from 2008. By the way, if you're enjoying the video thus far, please give it a thumbs up. This takes time to install all these versions and I, I would really appreciate it. Okay, so first impressions, just uh, scrolling and, and doing nothing pretty much on the, la on the desktop here. Try opening up Start Menu, let's see if that works. And uh, wow, the developer of Tiny11 wasn't joking. This really is tiny version of Windows 11. And here we only have Edge, the Edge browser. We have the settings menu and we have File Explorer. So 
Yeah, there's literally nothing here and I open up Edge by no reason, so yeah. Okay, I think the first thing we need to check out is the task manager. So if we right click over here and go to task manager, we can see how much RAM we have used up by default. So let's take a look. Okay, and here we are. So it looks like 56% of our RAM has already been taken up by just nothing, I guess. Uh, so at the top, we have the anti-malware service executable. That's probably Windows Defender doing, it, doing its thing. So uh, I probably wouldn't recommend disabling that, or I would recommend something like Surfshark antivirus, which you can get as well. And that's probably gonna have a bit less usage there on your CPU. We also have widgets, so that takes up around 130 megs of RAM. And we, for some reason, have uh, Edge. That's probably uh, a saved up tag. We can just remove that and see how that removes uh, some of the memory and we still have around 50% being taken up. So yeah, in terms of CPU, I'm actually happy to say that we are using around 10%, which is pretty good. That means that we probably will be able to run like video and stuff like that. Okay, so the number one thing where Tiny11 will help you out is probably web browsing. Um, since it does remove quite a bit of RAM from those uh, apps, it can free up and you can use it on something like YouTube instead. Okay, so here we are loading up YouTube. So web browsing is possible, uh, but let's see if we can play video. As you can see at already, it's not exactly smooth. So let's go to our channel here, Search for Academy. Once again, drop a sub if you're watching and uh, let's play just one of our videos here. Okay, man, I'm something I really appreciate right now the touch pads nowadays are a hundred million times better than they were when this PC came out. Let me tell you that. Okay, so we are running currently at 720p, which is actually pretty surprising. And as you can see, the playback is actually uh, pretty decent. Uh, we are getting some skipped frames, but overall it's pretty usable. Now, what's interesting to try is something like if I open up another tab and do like a Google search or open up surfshark.com, for instance, so let's see how it's going to react now. And I'm going to be monitoring this on the task manager at the same time so we can check out how it looks like. So here on the task manager, as you can see, our CPU is at 100% almost, and we still have a bit of memory left actually, even though we have two tabs available here. Now, believe it or not, YouTube has actually gotten a bit harder to run over the years since they do add new features all the time. But again, on this PC, it actually runs pretty all right. It's not great, but you can use web browsing and things like that. But I guess one thing that's kind of wild to me as I'm making this video right now is that you we're running Windows 11 and, and it really shows you that you can run Windows 11 on pretty much anything, which is something that you cannot say the same on like something like Mac OS, right? Like I guess you could do it in a hacky way, but doing this this way on Windows is so much easier. So it's kind of surreal and I am enjoying the experience, but at the same time, I'm seeing how slow things are here. All right, so one more thing I wanted to do in this video is that if you have Tiny11 installed, can we reduce RAM usage even more? Is it possible? Well, we're gonna do it right now here live on camera. So number one, we're gonna open up the task manager again and see how much RAM we have to work with. And again, it's hanging around in around a 60% range, 67% range. So probably number one thing that will increase performance is by going to uh, uh, our settings here and going to personalize. Here, if we go to colors, we can actually disable transparency effects. So that's number one. We can also enable dark mode, but I'm not gonna bother with that for now. I'll just keep it on light mode, but you can change that here as well. So if you're running an old PC, definitely disable this uh, these transparency effects. Another thing that you can do actually, and this is a bit underrated, but if you're running a really, really bad GPU, you can actually change the background to something like solid color. So if we change this from picture to solid color, we can leave it either black or something like that. And it will also help just a little bit. We're also gonna change our desktop icon so I can actually access my computer. So I'm just gonna select that and apply. And now we can head here and actually change a bit more stuff. So by right clicking on this PC, going to properties, and then if it loads, we can actually go to advanced system settings over here. And you can also see our specs here if you're curious. And here on this system properties window, we can actually go ahead and go to performance 
and, and also disable additional animations like animate controls, animate windows, animate animations. Uh, you can also disable enable peak. You can fade, disable all these fade outs. And uh, also I think this uh, slide open combo boxes. So again, these are certain animations and even disable the translucent selection rectangle. You can also disable shadows for icons, which should help a little bit again. And we can see how much RAM, it's probably not a RAM thing, It's but it's going to help either way. So you can already see it's a bit smoother, but again, that's probably not going to reduce memory that much. If we can see what's actually using up our memory, we have edge. So let's end the task there. Microsoft store, let's end that task here. Um, we're gonna leave that widgets. We're probably gonna end the task there, all of them. And we're actually below 50% now, which is pretty nice. Start menu, can we end the task <laughs> the task for start menu? Uh, yeah, not much that we can do there. All right, so after all that, let's go to the conclusion. Is Tiny11 worth it? Look, I've seen the comments asking if Tiny11 is the best thing out there and it might very well be the right thing for you to install. Since I did try to use Linux on this PC, I would say that it still felt so much better compared to this due to maybe not having as many fancy animations and apps running in the background. And yeah, Tiny11 for all that it does, it can't remove every little bit. And for that, you're probably gonna have to use something like PowerShell. And at that point, you're really messing with the system at such a deep level where it can impact certain things and stability. But, and this is a big but, for lightweight windows, Tiny11 is as good as it gets. Now, the question is on whether it's worth it or not compared to stock Windows 11. Look, my advice is this. If you're currently running an older machine, mid-spec or lower spec with something like Windows 7, you're still on that older Windows version or Windows 8 or Windows 10, and you're planning to upgrade to Windows 11, then Tiny11 is probably something that it's worth investing and downloading instead of the stock version. Because if you're going to deep load your system anyway, Tiny11 is going to leapfrog you and you don't have to deep load it yourself and it's already nice and clean from the get-go. On the other hand, if you already have a PC with Windows 11 and you thought, wow, Tiny11 is gonna give me like super good performance and stuff like that, uh, you might wanna tune down your expectations. Instead, what I would do if I already had Windows 11 is I would deep load it myself. And we actually did use things like Geek Uninstaller. We shared it how to do it in one of our videos, which I will leave here and in the description below. And you can do it yourself. So it's probably not worth it. So to sum up, I think Tiny11 is a wonderful project that allows people with lesser hardware to run modern Windows. I still think that Linux will give you a better experience in terms of overall performance, but if you love Windows and you just have to stick with it, then Tiny11 is as good as it gets. Guys, that'll be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy our content, definitely hit the subscribe button to support our channel and go check out more Windows content right over here on the side, like that Windows Vista video that we made. That one was pretty crazy. And yeah, that'll be all for this video. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.